Today I got to thinking about a classic Dr. Phil weirdo that went on to his show. This was back during the era of Dr. Phil being a bit of a kingmaker for social media superstars, most notably Danielle Brigoli, who got her start by going on Dr. Phil with the Cash Me Outside stuff. And for a little while we saw a flood of this. It became quite the hype train to go on Dr. Phil to act as over the top as possible to try and make a career out of it. Most of the time it felt very phony baloney where the individual was just putting on a song and a dance to try and get some kind of social media career out of it. And Dr. Phil was just the helpful lightning rod saying insightful things like, Hey, come on now. That's not good. Have you ever heard of Farmville? When he's plugging his mobile game ads. But... There was one goofball in particular who, back in 2017, kind of took the internet by storm for a moment. His name was the Sexy Vegan. At the time, I assumed this was just a load of horseradish with another person going on his show to try and squeeze some juice out of his teats, get some followers out of the appearance and the performance, and wasn't genuine. But it was entertaining, and today I started thinking about it again, so I went and re-watched the episode and decided to check in to see what the sexy vegan is up to all these years later. Well, it turns out I was a naive fool back then, because the sexy vegan is realer than the freckle on my left butt cheek. The guy is actually off his gourd. So he... I'm going to show you clips from the episode here in a moment, if you don't remember who he is. It actually is just a, a wild appearance. But... He got arrested in 2019 for sexually assaulting a pit bull. Apparently, he had recorded an act, basically bestiality, with a pit bull and got in trouble for it, obviously, and then announced his presidency in, like, 2020, and even today, well, I guess a couple months ago, to be exact, is still trying to lobby as a presidential candidate and still doing the exact same shit that he went on Dr. Phil for, like actually doing all of it from what I can tell. So let's go ahead and see the episode to get you all caught up to speed with the sexy vegan. Susan says in August of 2016, Hans legally changed his name to Sexy Vegan. <laughs> I didn't even know you could do that. It's a real life McLovin's situation here. I know people have changed their names to really silly, ridiculous things in the past, but I thought there were certain guidelines that you had to play by, and I thought something like this would be prohibited, like, no, sir, you can't change your name to this, get out of our office, and then they spit on you on your way out or something. Because I know you can't change your name to a slur or anything like that, right? So I just assume sexy vegan would also fall into the category of being like an obscenity that they wouldn't legally allow you to change your name to. So, when this first aired, I thought that was a huge red flag that it was all fake. Like, just all bogus. But, from what I can tell, it really is his name. And now he walks the streets wearing nothing but a Speedo, <laughs> carries a full-length mirror wherever he goes. Susan says her son tattooed Sexy Vegan on his forehead, has been arrested 15 times, and refuses to get a job because he's, quote, too talented and beautiful for a 9 to 5. That pretty much sums up Sexy Vegan in a nutshell here. So, Dr. Phil lays out the lore for you with the cliff notes. He then brings on people closest to Mr. Mr. Sexy, and they kind of go through, like, the effect that it's had on their family and all of that, and how desperately they want it to not be the case. The audience can't help but laugh at him because he has fundamentally turned himself into a clown. He is disruptive in society and tries to get all eyes on him all the time, and people can't help but giggle at the absurdity of him and what he's doing. He actually does travel with a full-body mirror like he's some kind of character out of an MMO and the mirror is like his special weapon that he can't leave the house without. He actually does that, apparently. It wasn't just for show on Dr. Phil, which blows my mind. My name is Sexy Vegan. I got my name legally changed to Sexy Vegan. Hans no longer fits me. When people see the tattoos, they're shocked. I'm a strict vegan. I once was down to 1.3% body fat. The beautiful vegan Messiah. 
So another thing that jumped out at me when I first watched that was the tattoos looking really cartoonish. It looks like he puts them on his face with marker every morning as opposed to being legitimate tattoos. But again, I was wrong. A victim of my own hubris thinking I knew tattoos just because I get some. They're real. Those are actual tattoos. I, I, don't, I don't know exactly why he'd get just the word vegan tattooed on himself so much. Unless he was really trying to take a page out of Suicide Squad Joker's playbook with like ha 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 written all over him. I, I don't really get it. If you want to have vegan tattooed on your body, why not choose a better font as opposed to fucking Comic Sans or the bubble letters here? When I go out, everyone stares at me because I wear a Speedo-esque outfit and I'm exotic like a Lamborghini SV. I love walking around in my Speedos because putting clothes on is like putting tarp over a Lamborghini, which makes no sense and I get for that all the time. When I go into a grocery store and fall around by the security, which is so annoying. If that's annoying, then just put on some goddamn clothes. It's the simplest solution of all time. Just tarp up the Lamborghini during the rainstorm, right? And that rainstorm is called shopping and, and being in public and having some decency. It's not that difficult. It, it's making a mountain out of a molehill here. It takes two seconds to just put on some clothes. I'm drop dead gorgeous and a great singer dancer. I can make it on my talents. I have several YouTube videos. I see myself in five to 20 years getting my own reality show, segueing that into a high ranking government position, either first American king or president. I cut out a good chunk of his monologue here. He very much dislikes his mother, who seems extremely sweet based on what I've seen. Like she pays for all of his legal fees. He leeches off her money because his mother has $11 million as an inheritance, so he does come from money, and he tries to suck as much of that out as he can. He refuses to get a job because he thinks he's far too talented for it, and believes that he will pop off because of his talent, his God-given abilities, and eventually land a reality TV show which he will then use to get a position in the government. And with that whole speech he gave right there, back when I first saw it, I was convinced that it was pretty obvious this guy wasn't being serious. It was all just to promote his YouTube channel and his Instagram. I still think that was the primary objective here, but it seems like he really is convinced of this. It seems he may legitimately be delusional, because he is still doing this today. From what I can tell on his social media, uh, platforms, which is wild. You're an enabler, but you can't help it. Yeah. Why are we here then? What, what do you What do you want me to? You want me to help it? What, what do you want me to do? I just had to slide this clip in here from the episode. Fucking Doctor Phil, hitting her with the, well, what do you want me to do about it? What 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 am I supposed to do about it? What do you, What do you want me to do about it? Like he looked offended. Like, I, I almost expected him to, like, jump out of his chair and lunge at her. What do you want me to do about it, huh? Like, what do you mean? Like, why are you confused? Obviously, she wants you to help in some capacity. You've convinced an entire generation of Americans that you are extremely effective at solving family disputes and, and things that like this that she is taking to you and putting on your plate. Obviously, she wants you to do something to help her. Well, why are you acting this way? Uh, maybe he'll come out and talk to us. Maybe he won't. I really don't care one way or the other. This train, this train is moving on. If he jumps on board, he does. If he doesn't, we're moving on. We'll be right back. The way Dr. Phil handles his show is always so fascinating to me. How anyone ever bought into the idea that this guy is somehow the authority on matters like this or solving problems really to, to be like more broad. He treats his show like it's all such a burden to him. Like, it's all just a, such a nuisance. Everyone that comes on, he treats like a pest from what I've seen. So here he's like, eh, maybe he comes out, maybe he doesn't. I don't care. We're going to get this show on the road. Maybe he hops aboard, maybe he doesn't. What do you want me to do about it? What, what am I supposed to do about it? Who gives a fuck? Right in front of this family here, like right in front of them, like to their face, like come on, like it's ridiculous. Now of course I'm sure the family did receive some kind of compensation for appearing on the show. I don't exactly know how the formula works, maybe they get paid to just appear. 
So it probably isn't the biggest deal in the world. Maybe they weren't super upset about it or anything. But it's just so weird to me. Because so many people, when I was growing up, really thought Dr. Phil was basically like a saint. And really insightful and helpful. But every time I've ever watched him, even when I was young, I was just confused on why anyone ever thought that. Like, he doesn't seem like he does anything besides just be bored by the people's stories. My image is very important to me. I look at my collection of mirrors all the time to study myself and my beauty. When I dance in front of the mirror, I can create a really striking image. Skinny with a big butt. I got junk in my trunk, but I'm keeping it. The mirrors go with me wherever I go because I want to know what I look like. To be honest, that little jingle that he dropped right there, skinny with a big butt junk in the trunk but I'm keeping it, I actually think was ahead of its time. That would probably do really well in today's modern landscape of pop music, like with TikTok blowing shit up. He probably would have done really well in 2024 if he dropped that jam. But here's him explaining why he carries around a mirror so he can constantly be reminded of his beauty. People say that I'm narcissistic because I carry on a mirror wherever I go, but I don't care because I'm not because I have empathy. And I'm currently banned from the Beverly Hills Library for bringing the mirror in, but I'm looking to get that resolved. Well, there you have it. Checkmate. He can't be narcissistic because he has empathy. And he's also been banned from that library. I don't know if it ever got resolved. I couldn't find a follow-up to it, so... I guess that's for only sexy vegan, the librarian god, to know if that ever got overturned. I am the beautiful vegan messiah. Get you that water, okay? It's a song. I didn't say I was, and she knows it. I was just like my dad, okay? Ten luxury cars. My dad told me I had the same name as him until I legally changed it. My mom did not bail me out of jail when she knew I was innocent. I'm liberating over 70 billion pigs in cages so small they cannot move for years, okay? There's a lot happening right now. Let's just take a breather together and process. Let it digest for a moment. He comes out guns blazing. He comes out with, with some steam here. You can see the security's like, hey, come on, we'll get you some water. And that, that water's not coming. That water would do nothing to stop this here. This fire is burning, and it's burning bright. So he comes out, and he's he's got a lot of scrambled thoughts here that he's trying to convey, and it's it's hard to keep track of them. So I believe the beautiful vegan messiah is like his catchphrase or his song, I suppose, like his, his theme song, perhaps like a WWE entrance or something. Maybe he was expecting pyrotechnics to go off when he walked in. Not entirely sure. I work. My mom's a sociopathic piece of <laughs> I have the highest score in Hot or Not history. I got 9.9 out of 10 after 327 women rated me. Let's see your talent. I love that line right there. Let's see your talent. It reminds me of that amazing trumpet fight video from like five or six years ago where the guy's melting down about a trumpet player in public and then he goes, In 1975, I walked Bob Dylan up on stage. Who the fuck are you? You no talent piece of shit. <coughs> oh, God. <coughs> oh, that's what I get for invoking the... The, the wrath of the trumpet player. Uh. Whoa. Okay. Point is, great line. So, I don't know about the whole hot or not pop quiz right there with the trivia. I don't know if that's true or not. Weird thing to be flexing about, too, as he's moonwalking on the stage. Like, hey, I have the highest score in hot or not history with 300-something women saying I'm good looking, I'm super hot. Sounds entirely made up, but I have no way of fact-checking that. I'm just going to assume he pulled it out of his ass. That was some of the junk in the trunk. Just this lie. What's your talent, you ugly piece of Okay, stop. Hey, hey, look at me. Let's look see at your me. talent. No, huh? hey, hey, hey. No, you need to look at me. I don't have to do Okay, take okay. him out. Security, get him out of here. Thank God. Thank God. No. An incredible finale. I like when he gets up to Dr. Phil, he hits him with like three little pumps right here. <laughs> he just gets him with like a triple tap. Then it's right back to moonwalking. He's just spamming Fortnite emotes here while just saying that they don't have talent and that they're ugly pieces of shit. And then Dr. Phil finally says enough is enough. No more, no more fooling around. Get him out of here. So then he, he leaves. Security gets him. I appreciate the audience here, though. <laughs> like, there's some boos, and then there's a couple of claps. 
I'd love to know what they were clapping for because I wonder if they're clapping like, yeah, Dr. Phil, you you got him. The security got him out of here. Thanks for thanks for that. Or if they're clapping because, yeah, that was a great performance, sexy vegan. I imagine it's probably the former, but I like to play with the fanfic that it's the latter. Like there was a couple sexy vegan fans in there. They're like, yeah, sexy vegan. Yeah. You are going to come out here and use that kind of language in front of my audience. And audience, I apologize. That is childish awesome. and immature behavior. And uh, now I get to leave. Yes, you do. No. Don't it's, let the door hit you in the ass. <laughs> it's pretty much where it ends. Now, like I said, when I first saw this, I really thought it was just another one of those moments where someone goes on there, does something really dramatic like this to try and get some attention to their social media presence, because he does plug it a couple of times, really. He mentions it throughout the episode, like in his, uh, his intro and stuff. But upon further inspection, looking it up fucking seven years later, he really does just act like this. This, this is his real, genuine behavior, from what I can tell. With all of the charges that he's accrued over his life, as well as how he continues to post on his social media, I, I'm pretty confident in saying that this was actually just him being him. So yeah, I just wanted to revisit this moment here because it's probably like the weirdest guest Dr. Phil has had on in terms of how everything played out on, on the episode. So yeah, just wanted to remind everyone of this, and that's really about it. So yeah.